Welcome to Real Life Keto Radio. I'm Bridget. And I'm Rebecca. And, and we're, we're the, the Keto, Keto Sisters. Sisters. And we are on a mission to help women find a way of eating that fits into their real life, but still helps them move toward better health. Yes. So listen every Monday at 1130 Eastern on WLXU 93.9 FM in Lexington or streaming worldwide on radiolex.us. So laugh and learn your way to fun keto serious results with Real Life Keto Radio featuring the Keto Sisters. Hey, Keto Sisters here. We are doing a Q&A this week, which we love to do. We had actually a ton of great questions come in this week. We're going to try to get them all fit in during this time. Um, lots of great questions. One of the first couple were actually about sweeteners and different kinds of sweeteners to use with keto. Um, and it's interesting as we were looking at these questions, I thought back to one of the videos that Rebecca and I made a while ago and we got there for the video and I said, I'll bring all the supplies. And I brought literally like a gallon size of this sweetener that I thought was the best thing ever. I really thought like I was rocking the keto world. I mean, she brought the big like warehouse size. Picture the biggest sweetener you've ever seen. <laughs> That's the one that I brought. And I was so proud of myself. Chef, <laughs> chest was puffed out. She was ready to go. She's like, oh, I'm rocking this. Yeah. And she was like, oh, do you know what's in that? And honestly, I didn't. And I want to encourage you as you are listening, if you are new to this keto lifestyle, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. This is too much to take in. Just take baby steps. I was super proud of myself a year ago for using that sweetener because it wasn't just straight sugar in large quantities. <laughs> I wasn't eating like basic candy. Um, so I had to celebrate, like I have come far. Now I have more of an awareness of sweeteners, but Rebecca is always kind of our go-to sweetener person because she pays more attention to it. She's a little more evolved than I am in the sweetener area. I think that's Bridget's kind way of saying I'm the nerd of our couple. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I do like to pay attention to labels just because I want to make more informed choices. I don't, I don't live a strict keto lifestyle. I don't you know, even count a lot of macros or anything, but I do pay attention to labels because I always want to make the decision is eating this or drinking this worth the impact on my body. And you, you can't know that unless you know what the ingredients are. And I mean, honestly, most ingredient labels now, they seem like a science experiment, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's just a lot of chemicals. It sounds like, so it, it can be overwhelming, but some sweeteners that you kind of want to go to or lean toward if you're moving toward a keto or low carb lifestyle. I love stevia. Stevia is made from a plant, so it's a natural source. So that's like my go-to sweetener. Um, erythritol is a sugar alcohol and it does not um, cause an insulin response or an insulin spike in your body. And so that's another really good one. Those are my two go-tos. And there are several different brands out there that combine both of those in a sweetener. So a lot of the keto friendly sweeteners you can buy are blended of other like separate ingredients, but they have different properties and so they'll blend them. So it's, it's better to use for baking, for example, or some that are better to use like in a liquid form. So there's some different mixtures and blends out there, but stevia and erythritol, those are my two favorite ingredients to look for. Okay, good. Um, and then we had some, a couple specific questions. One person asked about like, you know, we're trying to always hydrate and get plenty of water in. And they asked about whether you should use those sweetener drops in your water. And again, we will always go back to what are your goals? How can we help you create your real life keto so that you are making baby steps forward and making progress? When I first got started, I, what started us on this journey was both of us drinking exogenous ketones, which we got several questions about this week. And we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but when I first started, I didn't care for the original flavor. I did use the sweetener drops to get the exogenous ketones down. And that was worth it because the good was outweighing the, you know, the negative effects of that. And, um, we always go back to good, better, best, and you're just taking one degree forward, getting a little bit better every day. Yeah. And so if you come from a place where you're not really drinking much water, there are a lot of people that don't drink water. I drink a lot of water. I like it, but that's not hab habitual for a lot of people. And so if you need extra flavoring to make sure you get that hydration in, that's probably more important to get water in your body because we need water. I mean, there are studies after studies that you can see that show that Americans are chronically dehydrated. We just don't drink enough water. And a lot of that is because we drink sodas and coffees and, you know, things that aren't necessarily great for us and they're liquid. And we think that's hydrating us, 
but a lot of times those have caffeine and other ingredients that actually dehydrate us worse. So if you're coming from a place of not drinking much water and you need a little extra flavoring, you can use those sweetener drops. Is it ideal? No, but is it better than not drinking the water? I would say yes. Right. And compare yourself to where you were when you first got started. If you were drinking three sodas a day and now you're intentionally drinking water or a few drops going to really be like that big of a deal. No, like just compare you to you and compare you to yesterday. I love that phrase because that's really what we should be doing. Not comparing ourselves to this like ridiculous ideal of ourselves, not comparing ourselves to other people. Okay. Are you good? Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking that maybe our listeners would like some information on how much they should be drinking as far as water. Okay. So a good rule of thumb is that you want to drink half your body weight. Um, okay. Half your body weight in ounces. Um, funny when I, every day. So like if you weigh 150 pounds, you would want to drink 75, um, ounces of water per Not day. 75 pounds. Right. <laughs> but I, this is the, the truth. When I first started like sharing and doing these keto groups, um, I said in one of my groups, you need to drink half your body weight in water. And I had someone come on seriously alarmed and said, if you drank half of your body weight in water, you would drown. I was like, oh, I didn't mean like (laughs) half of what I weigh and water every day. (laughs) So now we're very careful to say in ounces, not in pounds. (laughs) Yeah very big difference. So that's a good point. And that's just a general guideline, kind of a starting point. If you live in an environment that's very dry, if you have a very active lifestyle, if you drink a lot of caffeine, those are things that maybe you you'll want to go on, on the higher end, or maybe even above that. All right. Another great question that we got was about net carbs versus total carbs. And, um, someone was asking about that and maybe how that would affect their stall. So, um, little side note, What this means is in keto, generally you track your net carbs um, and you want to stay under 20 net carbs per day. And what this is, is you take your total carbs minus sugar, alcohol, and minus fiber. And that gives you your net carbs. Um, And that's what you are looking at ideally staying under 20 again, know where you are, know where you're going um, and do what's realistic for you. If you're transitioning over. So if you're just kind of starting listening to us and you really haven't switched to a low carb or keto diet, like don't get caught up in the net carb versus total carb. Just start being mindful of the carbs that you consume. So just start thinking about it, maybe leaving the buns off the burgers, um, maybe not eating cereal and eating some protein and fat for breakfast instead of that. Um, So like, don't let that overwhelm you. Yeah. Baby steps always. Um, another question that we got was about chaffles and what a chaffle is. If you don't know is it's really big in the keto world. Like, They're so fun, <laughs> really big. There are many, many, um, groups dedicated to chaffle recipes. Um, but what it is, is basically just eggs and mozzarella cheese in a waffle maker. Um, and it makes kind of like a bready kind of bun biscuit thing. Um, obviously it's no carbs or very, very low carbs because it's just egg and cheese and you can add in other ingredients. Um, super versatile, very easy and surprisingly good. It doesn't just taste like egg. I don't know what magically happens when it's in the waffle iron, but some magic happens there. And we've even put like strawberries and Cool Whip on top because they're, um, it's kind of like a strawberry shortcake without the carbs. Um, or, you know, like there's a little bit of carbs and strawberries, but anyway, so chaffles are a great option. If you are looking for some fun alternatives, um, then there's the, the question was just like, what are chaffles? How can you use them? So that's a great thing. If you're not familiar with it and you're looking for some more versatility, definitely check that out. Yeah. I'm not even a big cook. I mean, we like to go out to eat a lot, but we went out and bought a waffle maker just for the chaffles because, you know, when I get together with my family and they're wanting to do the big Belgian waffles and the pancakes and all that sort of thing, like I want to participate and eat that, but I don't want to go off the rails and eat that many carbs, especially when it's the first meal of the day, I'd be kind of shooting myself in the foot. So we went out and bought one just for that purpose. It's worth it. Nice. For sure. Um, the next question was about, they said that they're not much of a meat eater. Um, so what are some kind of good options for protein? So I'll backtrack a little bit here and say that, um, keto is low, really, really low carb. You know, we already said it was under 20 net carbs, really low carb, really high fat and moderate protein. And so that protein can kind of throw people. So here's my first best recommendation for you. 
If you're just getting started, start with low carb. That alone, reducing sugar out of your diet, um, focusing on low carb, that alone will have incredible benefits for your health and your weight loss. Um, so start there. Then I would start adding in healthy fat. Um, we got to hear Dr. Mary Newport speak multiple times. And she talked about when she started intentionally adding coconut oil into her um, husband's diet, he naturally quit wanting the sweets. She did it in the other order. Like she started with the high fat before the low carb. Um, and just naturally because of getting full with fat, because of filling up with it and it's satisfying what your body needs, you naturally will eat fewer carbs. So focus on those two pieces first, then worry about the protein. It is the least important part of the puzzle of getting the keto lifestyle, right? Um, so would you add anything there? Yeah, I would just really suggest what you, you said though, Bridget, do the low carb part first, because if you don't get your carbs down and you start adding in healthy fats and you don't like naturally find that you're moving away from the carbs, a high fat, high carb diet is a recipe for disaster. Um, so while that did work for Dr. Mary's husband, she was a physician and was kind of monitoring what he was eating anyway. Like the better, the better way to go about it for most people is definitely like Bridget said, cut down the carbs first, make sure those are low, then start it adding in the healthy fats. Right. I was just trying to emphasize like how it can go together because when you're low carb, you need something to help keep you full if you're high fat, you naturally quit craving the sugars and carbs. So they kind of go hand in hand. And then you've got this protein that's kind of like a little bit of a, I don't know, outside thing. And it's just not as important. Focus on the other two first in the order of starting with low carb and then worry about the protein um, is our best recommendation for getting started. Because when you have all three and you're trying to keep them all balanced, that's where keto gets tricky for people and they want to give up because it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I would just say for sure, start slowly. Yeah. And unless you are a plant-based eater, the protein part is usually not hard for people. I mean, most people can figure out to eat a steak or chicken or do some protein powders, um, things like that. But yeah, if you're a, a plant-based eater, it can be a little more challenging to get the protein in, but you already know that because that's something that you're already dealing with. All right. So that comes to the end of our first round of questions. So stay tuned after a quick break. We have lots of really great questions left for you. Okay. Welcome back. Um, we have several questions left that we want to answer for you. Um, the first one is asking about fat coffee. Now, when I first heard that, I'm like, what in the world? Like your whole life, you probably have been made to feel like fat is bad. Fat is the enemy. Um, so when you first hear about people intentionally eating fat or drinking fat, it really does just blow your mind and probably freak you out a little bit. So I remember those feelings when I first started hearing these concepts and first was introduced to keto. Um, but what fat coffee is, is because people who do the keto lifestyle, very often they wind up doing a lot of intermittent fasting. Rebecca and I both um, generally fast till one, two, four, five in the afternoon, just depending on the day. It just kind of, once your body is keto adapted, you're fine. You will find that you don't need to eat as much. You're not being controlled by food. And so you just naturally go longer. And then the benefits of intermittent fasting are incredible. Oh, let's just hold it right there. I mean, people listening, I know you think we're a bunch of crazy people <laughs> because I would have thought the same thing too, but I promise you, you will not even understand until you feel it like not being controlled by thinking about what's my next meal going to be? <laughs> what am I going to eat for breakfast? What can I have for snack? How am I going to get through this day? I need something to pick me up. Like that was my whole life revolved around thinking about food. And so to be free of that is so amazing. And it's incredulous. I know you probably won't believe it until you experience it yourself. But people do send us messages all the time and say, oh my gosh, you told me this would happen. I didn't really believe you, but it actually happened to me. So we get those messages all the time. So stay encouraged, keep doing the things that we are suggesting and you will see it's just kind of a natural byproduct of everything that we're sharing. So because intermittent fasting goes so much with the keto lifestyle, um, a way that people extend their fast and keep from being really hungry while they're fasting. Um, and honestly, you'll get to the point where you feel like food is, it's just not a priority. So you just want to like do something quick in the morning and not spend the time to eat and prepare food. Um, 
So a lot of people do a fat coffee to start the day, which you can put, there's lots of different alternatives. Um, but a very common one is to actually just put butter in coffee and drink it. <laughs> I know it sounds nuts. Um, but you know, butter is one of the best keto foods. It turns very quickly into ketones in your body and gives you the benefits of ketosis. It keeps you really full for hours. It gives people a good, like powerful start to their day. Um, so a lot of people use this as an option. They just mi mix it up in a, you know, some kind of a blender or a frother. Yeah. Yeah. You can put some sweetener in. Um, so there's lots of variations of fat coffee, but it is a huge toll in your keto tool belt for sure. Yeah. And Bridget, I know you, you aren't a huge coffee drinker, but I'm telling you, you have not had coffee until you have the richness of having butter and coconut oil, or maybe MCT oil in your coffee. It really does give a different quality. Like it's, it's a richness that you've not had before. So it's amazing from a, a taste perspective. Yeah. And I'm trying some different variations and I have something that I'll drink a couple of times a week. I'm just not quite addicted to it yet. Um, I, I, actually prefer what we're going to talk about next. We had a question about exogenous ketones. So I generally start my day by drinking exogenous ketones. Um, and I choose that in general over coffee. Tell us a little bit about it, Rebecca. Yes. Yeah, so exogenous ketones are actual ketones, like what your body would produce if you followed a strict keto diet. Um, but it's in powder form, you mix it in water and drink it, and it gets your body into a level of therapeutic ketosis. So if you were to test your blood after drinking them, you would have an elevated level of ketones in your bloodstream, which that's sort of the goal of the keto diet. Because when you have ketones in your bloodstream, that is when you are on focus, your energy is good, you, you sleep well, like it's like all of the stars align and your life is as it should be. <laughs> yes. Um, so that is how both of us got started on this keto journey is we both started drinking ketones about five years ago and um, just radically changed our lives. So now we get to introduce them to other people. And what we see a lot is a similar um, progression with people. Once you start drinking ketones, you see how your body was designed to feel and you start, things start shifting. Your mind starts shifting. Your body starts shifting your cravings. You get better sleep, better energy, all these awesome things. And so for me, I can remember when I kind of made the connection, like, wow, drinking ketones makes me feel this good. What if I took it to the next, like to the next level and started actually doing a keto type lifestyle. Um, and then the next thing was intermittent fasting. And then it was slowly eliminating carbs and adding in fat. And I just kept doing more and more because I fell in love with how good I felt doing keto. So I wanted more of what I was already getting. Yes. And what we like to talk about on this radio show is real life keto. Like we are having this movement, the real life keto movement to help people find their real fit. So uh, for some people, they want to drink ketones and that's all they want to do. They're not open to changing their diet. They don't want to incorporate intermittent fasting that's fine. We want them to have the benefits of ketosis. They can get it by drinking ketones. We also have people on the opposite end of the spectrum that don't want to quote unquote cheat by drinking ketones. They want to get there the, the hard way, the old way, the old fashioned way by changing their diet, lowering carbs, increasing healthy fats, keeping protein moderate. Awesome. We help people that way as well. And then there are some people who want to do kind of a hybrid, something in between, which is where Bridget and I reside. Mm -hmm. um, so Another question about this that I think that we should talk about, and then we're going to um, share a little bit more about our story. Um, so someone asked in connection with drinking ketones um, about ketone strips. So um, that is something that gets a little bit more advanced, but people who are very serious about the keto lifestyle um, and they are doing the diet and testing their mat or doing their macros. Um, they like to test to see if their body is really in ketosis so they can compare their different, like how high of levels is their body in as far as their ketosis. Um, so there are three different ways that you can test three main ways that you can test your ketone levels. One is by um, pricking your finger and testing your blood. One is with a breath meter and one is with um, urine strips. Um, so they all have kind of different advantages, but really the most quality one is for you to do the, the um, to test your blood, to see um, how many millimoles. Millimolars. Yeah, it's M-M-O-L is the abbreviation. 
um, but to test that. And so generally a 0.5 to a 1.5 is going to put you in um, like therapeutic levels of ketosis. 1.5 to three is really higher levels. Um, that happens more kind of if you're doing fasting or really, really strict keto dieting. Mm -hmm. um, but do you want to answer this about the ketone strips? Yes. And so sometimes people, when they're using the urine strips to test, um, they can get confused by the results. So what a urine strip shows is ketones actually leaving your body. They're excreted through the urine and it will turn the strip usually purple. And so people get very excited at first when they're doing low carb keto and or drinking exogenous ketone and they see that strip change. Well, what happens is over time, your body becomes more and more adapted to that lifestyle because that's how we were designed to live like in ketosis. And so your body gets more and more confident and efficient at using those ketones. And so when you use them, you don't excrete them. You've actually used them as an energy source. So when you go to the bathroom and you test it, those strips might not change anymore. Sometimes that can be very discouraging because people think they're doing something wrong. And actually we want to say, yes, mm -hmm. you've made it. You, you're using the ketones that you're making or that you're drinking. You're not wasting them by excreting them. Yeah. So that was a great explanation. So lastly, we had someone ask about kind of telling our story. And so we, at the beginning of um, the radio show, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we shared our whole story and um, what got us, brought us to this place. But I want to share a little bit more about my story because someone asked and a huge part of my story is that I, um, for my whole life, I have been really, um, controlled by food. I have been totally addicted to junk food. Um, I can, I can, I can tell you some stories about Bridget. <laughs> I know I, mean, I was trying to think which stories I would tell, but go ahead. We would, we love to play games and our families get together and we play games. And I remember years ago, we'd get together and Bridget would bring like this huge bag of candy and just kind of dump it on the table. And I would kind of pick around, pick my favorite and like eat one, like one little miniature candy bar or whatever. And I remember she would just sit there while we're playing games and just unwrap and unwrap and eat and eat. And I wasn't keto back then. I didn't even know what a ketone was, but it kind of made me feel sick to my stomach, like just watching her eat. And it was almost like it was drawing her to do it. Mm -hmm. Like she couldn't help herself. It was almost, I know this. Yeah. I mean, it, it was really an odd thing to watch. And of course I didn't say anything because you know, you're friends and you can eat junk food if you want to eat junk food, but it was, it was just such a weird thing to see. Mm -hmm. And that's where, I mean, I could, we're almost out of time, but I could tell hours of stories like that, of how food completely controlled my life and just the freedom that I have now, um, since starting So that was my struggle for 40 years. And then once I started drinking ketones, um, and then, you know, it just, it, it freed me from the addiction of being controlled by junk food to the point now where I do these longer fasts and I'm intentional about what I eat and my eating isn't perfect, but I'm in control of my eating for the first time in my life. And it feels so good. And I'm forever grateful for what I have just uncovered through drinking ketones and now this whole keto movement. Um, so I'd love to be able to share it with you. And if you feel controlled by eating and you're looking for a way to break free, we would love to let you experience the freedom that we have found that you can get through real life keto. Thanks for listening. So if you are interested in learning more, you can go to reallifeketo.com. There we have tons of resources that we can share with you, all kinds of content and different things to help you on your keto lifestyle. Now, Rebecca was a lawyer, is a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Rebecca is a lawyer, so she loves to give the disclaimers. Um, so here it is. All right. So we are not your medical professionals. We're not even medical professionals. So we're just sharing our personal experience and our personal opinions. So you should not take anything we say as medical advice. You should always work with your medical provider if you want to change your, your nutrition, your supplementation, your exercise, whether or not you fast, anything like that run by your medical provider you proceed at your own risk, right? We are not responsible for it. We're just providing information that we love. Um, so also any results that we've discussed may not be typical and are not guaranteed. Do you feel disclaimed? If you've made it this far, you would really get along well with Rebecca, but I would probably make fun of you. <laughs> right. Hey, welcome to, was I supposed to wait for 12 seconds, right? Aren't I supposed to wait? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the beginning ones. I just send it to them attached to the other thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Since we got to read it, I need my nose. I don't know what is happening. I need a Kleenex or anything? I'll just keep wiping it on myself. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. And stay tuned after the break. we got some lot, lots of more really. Mm -hmm. And your life is, is as it should be. So the last question, and then um, we 
we'll move on from there. Sorry, I'll take that out. Um, <laughs> I couldn't get it to show. I would just encourage you to check out reallifeketo.com is where you can go for more resources for how you can truly change your life. Like our lives have been changed. That was great. Except say, don't say, I encourage you just say, if you want more information, okay. 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 But it was really good. Should I just rephrase that? Just that last little bit. Okay. So I would encourage you if you want, don't say encourage. Why am I so encouraging? You are so encouraging. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) 